Hey Projection Mappers, this is Dan Phillips from Phillips Projections and you are watching one of the videos in my DaVinci Resolve tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to take you all the way from downloading DaVinci Resolve through a quick down and dirty crash course in Resolve. We are going to be talking about DaVinci Resolve 17 and we are right in the beginning of this series. so. Let's just talk about what DaVinci Resolve is. DaVinci Resolve is a video editing software. And the best part about this video editing software is there are many facets to it. It is something that is great for the hobbyists, the everyday people, all the way up to professional level movies. In fact, if you watch the movie when you get started in here, there are so many different clips of movies that you would know, like there was a Marvel. Um, so this software is very heavily used by all types of people. And the best part about this software and why I am making the tutorial series for this software and projection mapping is because with all of these great opportunities that this software gives you, it is free. Let's talk about DaVinci Resolve 17 and its freeness. When you go ahead and go to their site and blackmagicdesign.com, or if you are anywhere and if you are like me, I just go to Google and I type in DaVinci Resolve and it comes right up. So their website is blackmagicdesign.com. And when you go to download this, you're going to not have to necessarily go straight to a page. You just need to scroll and pretty much click any page and it will give you many options to download it. When you go to download it, you're going to notice that there are two different downloads. So you'll see a free download now and a buy online now for roughly $300. And right away you're like, you lied to us, this is just a trial. It is actually not. This software in this free download, you get pretty much the entire thing. And there's no like time constraints or limited file sizes or watermarks on exports or anything like that. You literally get a wealth of options for free. What is different between these two things? Let's scroll down and I'm going to just make my way down. So bear with me. Hopefully not pass it. I'm getting close. All right. So here we go. So there are two great versions that you can go for. The DaVinci Resolve, this is that free download that I talked about. This includes everything that I'm talking about and demonstrating. I actually do not have the Resolve Studio. The Resolve Studio is the $300 upgrade. So this $300 upgrade will give you everything that's in that free version plus some extra bonus features and the big one that would sell me and push me towards it would be the performance so you get like the neural engine you get um, which uses your computer's hardware a little bit better um, so it will process things faster another uh, cool thing is if you want more of the out of the box FX filters that you can just plug in and go that is another thing that has it there's definitely some other things like uh, 3d tools the HDR things but for the most part you won't really use those aspects as much as you would use the performance and the FX filters with projection mapping that we're doing here. You get to choose which one you would like. I fully suggest just hitting the free download now and if you hit a wall or if you're like wow I just want to support this awesome company then 
I would go ahead and buy it online afterwards. But go ahead, just start with the free download now. You're going to download it for whichever system you have and then install it. Once it is installed, you can go ahead and open it up and we'll do that together. So DaVinci Resolve and it will start loading. As this is slowly loading on my laptop because I have a lot of things going on, as it's loading, I'm going to tell you a little bit about where it's going to drop you off. So it's going to drop you off on the project manager screen. Perfect timing. So this screen is the first screen that you are going to see as you get into DaVinci Resolve. This is that home base where it has the collection of all of your projects that you are working on. So after a few years, you're going to notice that this will start showing like Halloween 2019, 2020, 2021, all the Christmas shows that you come up with. These will all be housed right in here, which makes it really easy to go ahead and get into. There are different things that you can right click on it and you can have all of these different options. So if you need to rename something, if you want to export a project to send out um, for other people to work on, you can do that or import projects from other people. Um, there is a lot of different things. You can scrub your project, your projects as well. So you can go through and you can scrub and see what it looks like as you are going through. The first thing that you're probably going to want to do is to go ahead and create a new project. So there's a new project down here. And then you can open up a new project. Let me just show you what this looks like as you get in. So once you get in, you'll see that it will open up and it will dump you into this nice clean page. In this clean page, you'll see that there is a grid for files over here and over here it is a green. You can see that there are the different tools to get yourself through. There are some scrub bars as well. And then down here, you'll see that there are icons. This is where you can go to all the different pages. So some of you might be familiar with the Adobe Suite. So you have Photoshop, you have After Effects, you have Illustrator. That's kind of like DaVinci Resolve, except DaVinci Resolve, instead of going from separate program to separate program to separate program, they have it all built into the one program, which I actually think is pretty cool. To go across these, this first one is a Media tab. Then you have your Cut tab. You have an Edit tab over here the Fusion tab, the Color tab, Fairlight, which is audio, and then you have your Delivery or your Export tab. And these will take you to all different screens that have all different purposes. To make this make a little more sense, let's go ahead and get into my demo project so you can see what that looks like. And to open it, I just double clicked. So let's start all the way over here on this left tab. This is your media tab. When you click into your media tab, you're going to see that over here is where you will see all of the different file names. These are things that are not embedded in your project. It's the ones that are on your computer or your hard drives or anything like that, that you would like to add into your project. That's where you would find it here. This screen over here is a screen that demos the media that you are looking at. And down in here, this whole bottom half of this panel, this is what is actively in your media for this project. I can go in and I can look and click on my masks folder and it will have all of my masks here. And you can see as I hover over top, let's go to my burnt house one. So as you hover over top, it shows up in the media visual. And this is these are stills. So as I move back and forth on here, there's no changes. Let's go into videos and then you can see. So as I'm here in this video, I can scrub back and forth 
and you can hear the audio you can hear and you can see it scrubbing I can also click on it and then go over here and I can drag around here I can hit play and have it play for me and all of these different options that you are normally used to so same thing with audio images timelines that you might have built in the media tab is a great place to look through things you can organize things like you can see that i created my own folders here to have things nicely organized it's something that you can do it's not necessary that you have to do it in this tab but it is a tab nonetheless that you might find useful from here to there but you'll notice as we go through tabs that a lot of the things that you can do in one tab, you can do in another tab as well. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying the tutorial so far. There is a lot of time and research that I put into all of these tutorials. It is great that we have platforms like this that I can help share and spread the knowledge. These tutorials are ad supported and from donations from generous viewers like you. In an effort to further share the information, give a better experience for the viewers, share files and resources, as well as support the channel monetarily, I created a website and a course. The website houses a lot of information and resources from many great contributors in the projection mapping community. It is updated regularly as new useful resources become available. The course that's another resource that is continuing to grow. It acts as an organized and ad-free experience. There is exclusive content and resources that are included with the course enrollment. For instance, the media used in the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation tutorial series? Well, that's in the course, included for free. You just need to click to download. The final platform is the store. In the store, you will find different resources that are available for purchase at reasonable prices. Keep an eye out for coupons and specials, especially during the off season. All of the funds that are raised are reinvested back into the growth of the channel through purchases of hardware, software, and other things that can be used to create new tutorials, reviews, and demonstrations. There are two free things that you can do right now to support the channel. Please like this video and subscribe below. The more likes and followers that we have, the more likely companies are to send loaner or demo resources for us to work with and share on this website, all free for you to access. I thank you for your time and consideration of supporting this channel. Please enjoy the remainder of your free tutorial. Let's go ahead and let's jump into the edit tab. In the edit tab, you will find a bunch of different options as far as video editing. So if you are used to Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere or any type of those standard video editors, this is really what you're used to. If you are coming from the Adobe After Effects and you are used to the layers, this is that tab that really replicates the layers as much as possible. Layers don't really exist here like they do over in the Adobe world. So back on track, in this edit tab, this is where you will have your videos and you will be doing a lot of the cutting, the piecing, the fitting everything together. And you'll see that it's on one timeline that goes straight across everything here so if i click let's say right here this is one minute and two seconds in so looking at this line it goes straight down so i have my house mask on top that's my first layer my falling snow i have my house facade and i have the audio tracks so you'll see that there is a linear progression and they're all on top of each other. I'm going to zoom back over and I'll show you here which is nice and clear. So you can see my house mask, that's that black part around. You have the falling snow, which you can see some of the falling snow. You have the house facade, which is the picture of the house. 
and then you have the audio as well. There are a lot of different options in here where you can turn on and off. So if I want to turn off the snow, I can turn off the snow. If I want to take away the house facade, I can turn those on and off here. There is also the auto track selector as well. I don't really use that one. Or you can lock things. I do lock my tracks as I go just to make sure I don't screw anything up. So that is something I do use quite often. I'll lock and unlock tracks as I go. Same thing here with the audio. Right here, you'll see that there are two audios. So there are two sounds that are actively playing at the same time. Now, instead of deleting the audio, what I do is I mute it and you can do that by clicking here. Next, you have a solo. That's where it kind of mutes everything out and focuses. Then I have the auto track selector, which I said I don't really use as much. And you can also lock these tracks, which protect it. Above in the edit mode, you have some cool things. So these are trimming tools and a bleed tool. You'll use this bleed tool to slice different parts. So if you want this to end at a certain part or you want this new to start and stop or anything like that, you'll probably be using that bleed tool quite a lot. Over here, you can insert clips. You can overwrite clips. You can replace clips. Um, and I'll go into a little better detail. This site really helps with these different options. And the snapping tool, that is when you're going to do your bleed. Let me get my bleed over here. You can see that I'm hovering over and as I scrub is showing it right up above. So as I scrub my way, you'll see a little thin red line, but as I get close to that big red line, it snaps straight to that time. So as you're going, let me turn that off. So as you're going and you're moving this around, like let's say right here is the exact spot that I want to slice it. So now I would go into my bleed and without that, I'm really trying to, without that snapping, I'm really trying to get it super close and that's just frustrating. So I can just hit my magnet tool and then it will snap right to where that is so I don't have to guesstimate. It's just right there. So that's the snapping tool. For the most part, I leave it on at all times, but there are some times where I do take it off just to maneuver things a little easier without it snapping as I'm trying to fine tune something by moving. These are linked selections, position locks. You don't use those as much. It's, Flags are helpful if you're trying to note, it, note things, same thing with markers. And then you have your zooming tools. So like I said, these options, their website helps explain a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up their website again if I can find it. Let's get that website up again. All right, DaVinci Resolve. All right, so here I am back on their website. I'm going over to the edit page. This is a great website if you're looking to figure out what they can actually do. Here are the different ways that you can edit the clips into the timeline. This is where I was showing you the insert, overwrite, replace. This is what that means. When you go to insert a clip, it will make room for it in between when you go to drag and drop it. When you're doing the overwrite, when you go to drag and drop it in, it's going to cut and it will place that new clip in exactly where you um, are dropping it. And then whatever was there, boop, it's gone. Replacing. So if I am replacing, this is taking that single clip on that timeline with that same exact length and it will um, replace it with a different media file. Fitting to fill. So this will fit and fill. It takes a portion of the clip that you have used and you marked and it will add a speed change to either speed it up or slow it down. So whatever space it needs to fit in, it will fit within there without altering any of the other paths. Placing on top, well, this will add it to the timeline as it will be the next available um, as it's going. So you can think of it as this is playing and then it gets to this point, it's going to show this one because this one is on top and it will hide these. Then when this 
clip is over, it will drop down and start showing the rest of that clip from where that leaves off. This is a lot of the layering. So we I use the place on top a lot. And that's just because a lot of the pieces that I have on top as I stack, I have chroma keyed out. So there's holes that show the video underneath, but this hides the video. So like my masks, that's one way that I do that. Append at end is when you go and drag and drop, it throws it at the end, a ripple overwrite. This replaces a shot of one length with a shot of a different length. The longer clips replace the clip in the timeline and push everything down to make that room while the shorter clips pull things in so there are no gaps. So you can see that just in clicking the way you want to um, edit and add in your clip, there's a lot of different options where in some of the other files you have to manually do that. So another thing that I wanted to show was the trimming. And then you have the roll, the ripple, slip and slide. So as you are going into your pieces and you're trying to change the length of them, you can just click on the sides and move it left to right, but there will be different effects that will happen. So up here, we'll show you right now they're on the ripple and the slip, of course. All right. So I'm just going to give it a second to make its way. It's almost there. So the roll. All right. So when you get into the roll, it's going to pull it either way. And you'll see that this, these clips stay the same. The ripple, when you go to grab it, is going to stretch one side, but not the other. The slip will move the video within its own frame and the slide will slide the video back and forth. So there's all different tips. There's all, sorry, all different tips, all different types of um, trimming that you can do as well. And once again, if you head to their site, you can see the readout. A lot of times I like to just test it to learn it as I'm going. So that brings on that brings us through the editing tab. The editing tab is the one that I use the most, which is why I brought you here first. The cut tab is very similar. And the one thing that I want to show you about the cut tab is it's very similar to the editing tab. You have your media up here over here. You have your visual. And then over in here, this is where it's different. There are two timelines. You'll notice that there is one timeline that goes very far, but is static. And this one is one that moves. So if you watch, I'll just take this, whoops. So I'll just take this and I will move this back and forth. And you'll see that these blue bars do not move, but down below, you'll see that these move a lot. This is a great way as you are getting towards that end of the editing, or if you need to move around in clips, this is a great way to just go over to the cut side. You can find where you want. So I want to be, I want to be done this whole thing going on in the garage and I want to move to the next spot. So I'll move it over here. They closed out. Now I can go back into the editing side where I can get to it a little easier. So that is the way that I use this. You could literally do pretty much everything from this editing side in here as well. It might not be as easy, but if you want something that is, if you're trying to just throw some videos together to just put out, this cutting page would probably be faster than messing around with the editing page. The editing has a little more fine tuning. So the cut page, that's how I use that. The editing page, I explained how I use that. Let's move on to the fusion page because this is the other big page that you will be using. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying the tutorial so far. There is a lot of time and research that I put into all of these tutorials. It is great that we have platforms like this that I can help share and spread the knowledge these tutorials are ad supported and from donations from generous viewers like you. In an effort to further share the information, give a better experience for the viewers, share files and resources, as well as support the channel monetarily, 
I created a website and a course. The website houses a lot of information and resources from many great contributors in the projection mapping community. It is updated regularly as new useful resources become available. The course, that's another resource that is continuing to grow. It acts as an organized and ad-free experience. There is exclusive content and resources that are included with the course enrollment. For instance, the media used in the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation tutorial series? Well, that's in the course, included for free. You just need to click to download. The final platform is the store. In the store, you will find different resources that are available for purchase at reasonable prices. Keep an eye out for coupons and specials, especially during the off season. All of the funds that are raised are reinvested back into the growth of the channel through purchases of hardware, software, and other things that can be used to create new tutorials, reviews, and demonstrations. There are two free things that you can do right now to support the channel. Please like this video and subscribe below. The more likes and followers that we have, the more likely companies are to send loaner or demo resources for us to work with and share on this website, all free for you to access. I thank you for your time and consideration of supporting this channel. Please enjoy the remainder of your free tutorial. So the Fusion page, this is your FX page, okay? This is a place where you get to do all of the cool stuff, to change things around, to add shadows, add shatters, add all different effects, blurring, texts, um, spinning. This is where I would do all of that fun things. When you go in here, you're going to see that there is an effects bar. There is a screen here that's split into two. Over here is your inspector bar, which we'll talk about. Over here is your nodes. And then this bar here is your clips bar. And if it's not there, you can turn it on and off right from here. In fact, you can turn off and on and off your effects. You can add, click on media, whatever you would like to do. That's all right up here. I'm pretty sure you know what the media pool is. That's where you grab the media. The effects are the different canned effects that you can just click and add in. The clips here, these are the different videos or the different layers that are in your edit. So you'll see we have the garage, we have the house, or these. this is the snow, you have the facade, and you have the house mask, just like you have over here. House mask, falling snow, house facade, gift wrapper. And so all of those things are right here and you can click. So if I want to work and do effects for this part, so my, for my facade, I would click on that. Let's do that. Now I'm on my facade here. And to do any of the changes, we are going to have to do them in something that is called nodes. These nodes are different steps that as you are working your way from the input of the media, it will go through the steps that alter it until it goes out to the visual that everyone will see. So your nodes are the steps. Every time you go to start something new, the nodes will start off blank. You will have a media in and a media out. And you're going to notice that there is a line that is connecting them. And each one of these also has different, different shapes on them. So the triangles on the left side, this is an input. And then on the right side of these, you are going to see a square, which is your output. So you have the media in, which is our starter, and then nothing happens, and it's the media out. Now I want to make something happen here just to show you that something can happen to this. So <clears throat> up here there are a bunch of different options, and these are nodes that you can just drag and drop and pull in, just like these that are up here, but these are very commonly used ones. 
So I'm going to grab one. Hmm, which one should I grab one? All right, so let's say I want to go ahead and it's not a good time to be picky. Let's just do blur. Okay, so I'm going to grab this blur and I'm going to and click and drag it down. Now I'm going to drop it here. Now this blur, you'll notice I drag and dropped this on here and nothing has happened to this screen. And that's because I have my media coming in and that straight line is taking it straight to that media out and nothing happened in between. This blur is just floating up here and it's not connected. Now you're going to notice that there are the same things on this blur, these same inputs, outputs. And here we have another one that is on top. So to add this in, what I could really do is I could and then grab and drop and then grab and drop over. But I'm not going to do that because that takes too much time. So the easiest way to do it is just drag it, click, drag and drop. Now it's going to make me a liar. All right, go ahead, click, drag and drop and there it goes now it's now it's on in there so now i have the media in it's going through a blur and then the media out but you'll notice up here there's not a lot of changes this is where we come into the inspector window up here this inspector window is the window that really looks at the node and tells you all the different cool things that you can do with that node and that's where you change the node itself. So in here, I'm going to see that there's all different ways that I can blur it. I'll just leave it as the fast Gaussian, that's fine. I can change to just do with a certain color or just leave it at all. Here's my blur size. So I'm going to go ahead and as I bring this up, you're going to see that the blur size changes right on my video. And so I'll leave it like this. I'll just do it extreme, not that I would do it um, for my show, but I'm doing it extreme just so you can see. There's different clipping modes that you can do and different blends. I'm not gonna get into this just yet. Over here, there's a settings tab as well that you can go and there's different options that you can add into it. There's also modifiers up here that will happen. That's a different video for you. The other thing that I do want to point out here are these little diamonds. These are your keyframes. And if you're new to this, keyframes are a nice way to say, at this time, I want it to be this set of controls. At this time, I want it to be this changed set of controls. So for instance, if I want to start here at zero, and I want it to be zero, zero. I'm going to go ahead and click the keyframe. And then I'm going to move this over. Let's do to, I don't know. I don't want to do it too long. So let's do on the 80th frame there. That's where I want the blur to be up. Okay. So now when I go to replay, you'll see what happens. So do you see how this slowly blurred as it went? And you could even see it chugging along up here as it was going. That was the keyframes in action. It started at zero and then my next keyframe at 80, I wanted it to be 38% size. That is keyframing. There's other things that you can do with keyframe. I'll just show you here. There is a spline. And this blind shows, uh, well, it barely shows you, but this blind shows the different curves that you can do. And another spot that you can get to this a little easier, I don't want to totally screw things up, is over in the editing. You can see that as well. So that's where you can ease it in or ease it out and change the curve of how the keyframe works. So this is the inspector. These are nodes. Now, the one thing that I want you to know about the nodes is the nodes can be very, very complicated. 
it goes from simple to easy. And if you are just coming from Adobe After Effects and trying to save a little extra money and going over here, this might help you is knowing that you can move the nodes in all different ways. So if you like to visualize, let me turn off my clips so I have more room here. So if you like to visualize things like the layers, you can do it in a vertical format where here's the media, this is the first step, this is the first step, this is the first step, and then it's out. That might be easier for you. It's whatever works for you. Uh, just know that these are completely movable to make sense. There's also ways that you can group and label them as well so you know exactly what does what because I'm telling you nodes get complicated and we'll talk about that later. Now if you want some really really good videos on nodes head over and watch some videos from Casey Ferris. He does a lot of really good stuff with DaVinci Resolve. That tells you about the Fusion page and here we are over in the color tab. There's a lot of things you can do in this color tab. However, you won't use a lot of the coloring features in projection mapping as you would if you were creating movies and different scenes, that type of stuff. But as far as projection mapping, one of the big things that you would possibly do over here is do some masking. And in masking, you would use this window tool. You would pick what you would want here. You'd pick which type of mask you would want. I'll just do a pen one just to show you and then we can just go around and cut out like an outline that we want and it will only show the video that is within that mask and over time you can also fine tune if you need to fine tune anything like that that's the big thing that you would use in this coloring tab like I said there's a lot of other features you just won't necessarily use them as often as you would this potentially over here this is Fairlight. This is a sound. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff. But once again, I didn't really ever need to use it. This one I did need to use. So this is your export. So your delivery tab is the way that you take your file and you export it in whatever format you want. You can choose YouTube, Vimeo, you have Twitter, all different ones, uh, all different options that um, you can take. Usually I would, I just do a custom one just because that's me. You can also do the 264 if you want to do it that way or even just a YouTube one. So I usually just do the custom. I have my file name. I choose where I want it to export out to. I do mine in a single clip. I make sure that it's in the format that I need. The codec, the um, 264 is the best one at this point. It's the most widely, and by best, I just mean widely um, used by different media players. The 265 is another one that's even better, but not as widely used at this point. I always check to make sure the resolution is correct. And another another spot that you can change your resolution is down in the settings. This is the settings for your project. Definitely make sure all your resolutions match, uh, your map, your uh, and your projector. The frame rate, I usually leave right around 23. Sometimes I go up a little higher, but um, in reality, as you're putting it out onto your house it doesn't make that huge of a difference uh, quality i usually leave mine to automatic encoding is uh, high and then you can add it to the render queue to render on out and you can find your render queue up here so this is a crazy amount of information that is hitting you right out of the gate. And like I said, this really is the epitome of a crash course. I'm really not going into a lot of details. I kind of glazed over some things that are really useful and you might find useful. And it's just because I'm trying to keep this video a reasonable length. 
If you want someone who is super detailed, who's going through with a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, there are a lot of those out there, but hands down, the best one is Casey Ferris. It just doesn't apply directly to projection mapping like I tried to do here. So thank you for watching this video and making it through all of the just about 40 minutes of me talking and taking you through this. I hope it was useful. You can leave some questions or comments that you might have down in the comments section or you can reach out to me. The next video in this series is going to be coming up and I hope that you make your way over there where we're going to look a little closer at creating your show and I'm going to take you through the process of the show that I have here. So once again, thanks for watching. It was a pleasure teaching you today and I can't wait to teach you more.